This screencast is based on Module 6, Lesson 12, where we create rules to generate, create a rule to generate a number pattern and plot the points. This is based on the practice set, but it's very similar to the homework, so it should be a great deal of help. Okay, for number one, we have several parts here. Uh, we need to create a rule for a line that contains 0 and 3 fourths and 2 and a half with 3 and 1 fourth. A little cutoff, but uh, th that's what the numbers are. So how can I get from 0 to 3 fourths? Well, one thing I could possibly do is add 3 fourths. So if that works here, let's see if it works with our second ordered pair. I have 2 and a half plus 3 fourths indeed equals 2, or rather 3 and 1 fourth. So our rule is y, oh, get the right tool, y is 3 fourths more than x, and sometimes I would just like to write out the expression y equals x plus 3 fourths. Let's find some other values here. Start with some easy ones, right? Uh, 1, we add 3 fourths to that, 1 and 3 fourths. So I write the ordered pair, 1, 1 and 3 fourths. It's a little tight, but we'll do our best with this. And I now will go on to, we'll say, 4. And 4 plus 3 fourths is 4 and 3 fourths. Again, the ordered pair, 4, and 4 and 3 fourths. Let's plot the points. We'll start with the original one, 0, 3 fourths. The next one is 1 and 1 and 3 fourths. So we have 1 and 1 and 3 fourths. We'll go up to the uh, original uh, set there on the top. We have 2 and 1 half. So we have 2 and 1 half, 3 and 1 fourth. Looks like a nice straight line. Plot that a little more, more accurately. And 4. So we'll go to 4 and 4 and 3 fourths. Now we'll create a line. Okay, there's the line connecting those points. It says create a rule for a line that is parallel to BC, and that's our uh, line here. I could I haven't labeled those, but so I will. We've got a point B, and I have point C. So we need a line that's parallel to that that goes through one, uh, one fourth. So let's plot that point one, and one fourth. Let me get the correct tool here. And it goes right there. So we need to be parallel. Uh, well, we need to create a rule here that's going to work with this. If it's going to be parallel, uh, we're going to have to use an addition or subtraction rule. Now, how can I get from 1 to 1 fourth? Well, I could have y equals x minus 3 fourths. We'll give that one a shot. We'll test it out by creating another uh, a pair, another ordered pair using that rule. So what if I start with 2? If I have 2, let me get that back in line here, 2 minus 3 fourths would be 2, 1, and 1 fourth. So let's try that out. Now we'll plot that point, 2 and uh, 1 and 1 fourth. Let me get the right tool here once again, 2, 1, and 1 fourth. And let's do one more point. We'll do 3. That would be 2 and 1 fourth. So I'll find 3 and go to 2 and 1 fourth. And that looks like it's going to be parallel, so let's draw on the line. So yes, we verified that it is a parallel line. Now for part 2, we have another one. We have uh, a rule that goes through our point 1, 1 fourth, and that's our point right there. It's a little covered by the line. And 3 and 3 fourths. Alright, so one other way we could get to this other than subtracting 3 fourths is multiplying it by 1 fourth. So I could say uh, y equals 1 fourth of x, 1 fourth times x. And I think that'll work there because if I multiply 3 times 1 fourth I get 3 fourths. So let's plot that second point. 3 and we have our 3 fourths here. So we got two values here. I'll darken that one in. We need two more points that will uh, uh, conform with that. So I will say I've got, I'll go with, how about uh, 2? 2 times 1 fourth is 2 uh, is 1 half, 2 fourths. 
So I'm going to plot 2 and my 1 half. And we'll, uh, I didn't put that in the grid. It's a little tight here, so uh, I'd expect you to do that. But I'm just going to put the ordered pair up here. And I'm going to go with 4. 4 times 1 fourth is 1. So we have another ordered pair, 4 and 1. We need to connect these with line. Okay, let's go on to 2B. And the page is a little cluttered here. I had to superimpose B, where it says write a rule for a line that passes through the origin and lines between lies between B, C, and G, H. Uh, let me label uh, my G, H. It's this line over here. So I have my value G and H. So that's line G, H. If it passes through the origin, uh, we have a number of options. Uh, they often are multiplication problems. But we want to make sure that we're someplace between here and here. We want to pass through that origin. Well, there's an uh, infinite number of options here. I'm uh, going to choose a real easy one. And I'm out of space here, so I'm going to just go up to the upper uh, right-hand corner. And I'm going to say x equals y. Or y equals x, rather. So y equals x. And that's easy enough to generate numbers for, uh, because y and x are equal. So I have 1 and 1, and I have 2 and 2. And I'll plot a third, 3 and 3. It lies between the two. And all we have to do now is connect the dots and have it go through the origin, because 0, 0 would be another one. Okay, there's a line I, I, made, I misplotted, a 3, 3. I'm just going to... Uh, adjust for that. We'll put our 3, 3 right here. And you can see we go through the origin. And this line lies between uh, GH and BC. In fact, it's parallel to uh, BC, so it'll never intersect. In this part, we need to create rules that contain the point 1 fourth, 1 and 1 fourth, using the operations or description below then name two other points that would fall on that line. Well, we want addition here. So if we look at our uh, ordered pair, we start with 1 fourth, and we go to 1 and 1 fourth. The rule is very simple. What do we have to do? What do we have to add to 1 fourth to make 1 and 1 fourth? The answer is we needed to add 1. So y equals x plus 1 is a possible rule. And now that we have that rule, we can find pairs of points. So if my x is 0, my y is 1, my order pair is one, uh, 0, 1, uh, then I could take 4 and add 1 to that. We get 5. My ordered pair is 4 and 5. Now we want one that's parallel to the x-axis. So let's think about this a little bit. We want it to be a horizontal line. And the value for y needs to be 1 and 1 fourth. So our rule needs to be y equals 1 and 1 fourth. So we can use any value for x. It would be on this horizontal line. And that rule would make a horizontal line that is parallel to the x-axis. We need to make a couple more rules, again, uh, going through the points 1 fourth, 1 and 1 fourth. And we're asked for a multiplication uh, rule now. Now let's take our 1 and 1 fourth and change it into an improper fraction. So I'll rewrite that as 1 fourth, and 1 and 1 fourth is 5 fourths. Well, what did I have to do to that 1 fourth to make 5 fourths? I need to multiply it by 5. So y equals 5x or y is 5 times x, and easily create some rules here. I point uh, 0 for x. 5 times 0 is 0. My ordered pair is the origin. I can get another uh, one here. We'll say 3. 3 times 5 is 15, and the value for that is the ordered pair 3, 15. For d, we need to be parallel to the x-axis, or y-axis, rather. And again, I'll draw that. We're going to be going horizontally. And we started with 1 fourth for our value of x. So our value uh, should be x equals 1 fourth. That will give us a vertical line. Uh, 
that is one fourth from the y axis and parallel to it. Finally, we need to create a rule that starts with multiplication and then has addition. Well, uh, so what am I going to do here? Well, I remember I could multiply one fourth times five to get uh, one and one fourth, but I could do that with a combination of adding and multiplying. So, for example, if I had four times one fourth, and that would give me one, so I need one fourth more. So, my rule could be four x plus one-fourth. I could do it another way. I could have three times one-fourth plus what? Well, three-fourths plus one-half is one and one-fourth, so I could create the rule three x plus one-half. I could also multiply it times two. Two times one-fourth is one-half. And in order to get to uh, one and three, one and one and one fourth, I'd have to add three fourths. So I could have two x plus three fourths. Any of these rules would work, and we could also use fractions as well. But this is sufficient to give you some examples to get through the problem. Finally, we have number four. Mrs. Boyd asked her students to give a rule that could all that could describe a line that contains the points six tenths and one and eight tenths. Avi said the rule could be multiplied by three. Ezra claims this could be a vertical line, and the rule would be x always equals six tenths. Eric thinks the rule could add, be add one and two tenths to x. Mrs. Boyd says all the lines they are describing could describe the line that contains the point she gave. Explain how this is possible. Draw the lines on the coordinate plane to support your response. So the first thing we should do is plot the point. And I've labeled this uh, because it's a little confusing without the line here. And I need to go from 6 tenths in the x to 1 and 8 tenths in the y. Let's plot the point. And we are right here. So how could we do that? Well, let's let's start with the easiest uh, rule. That x is always six tenths, and again, yeah, it could be this line right here. I'm just going to freehand it this time, and that would follow the rule. Another one would be multiply times three. So let's get some other points here. Uh, if I have a zero times three is zero, and I have uh, two tenths times 3 is 6 tenths, so let's count that up. Go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right there. Plot that point. And again, I'm going to freehand the line this time. And that, there. And that would intersect that as well. If I added 1 and 2 tenths to x, so whatever x is, we add 1 and 2 tenths. So I'm going to start with 0, add 1 and 2 tenths, and I'm going to end up right here. And again, we'd have a line that goes right through there. So all three of these uh, rules could potentially explain uh, the, pre the presence on the, of the point 6 tenths and 1 and 8 tenths.